So going on this week, we have double loot inside of Fallen Saber. I know I jumped the gun and I said we were going to get quad loot. Four times the loot. And quite honestly, from Bungie's communication to us and their notice, it sounded like we were going to get four times the loot. But there was some skepticism out there because Bungie has given us that notice before. It's just an outright miscommunication. Therefore, no, you're not getting four times the loot from the Snipefall. Instead, you're just getting two times, which is still good. Two times the loot you still have an opportunity to walk away with a crap ton of loot and two shadow prices per run, if not at least one, which is why I've been able to lock down so many good rolls. Now, shadow price is a 450 round per minute auto. It's in that precision frame archetype, extremely vertical, manageable. But as far as PVP goes, I will say this archetype is not good. Like the skinny on archetypes of auto rifles inside of Crucible is like adaptives. You know, your 600s are still pretty decent at a 0.8 second time to kill. Rapid fires like Steel Feather, Arctic Haze, Reckless Oracle, they sit around a 0.77 time to kill value. And then weapons like Half Dam, Age Old Bond, they sit around a 0.83 second time to kill value. It's getting a little lengthier, right? But then all the way at the top, you've got Precisions, like Shadow Price, which has a 0.93 second time to kill value. Needless to say, it's not optimal, especially considering it's an auto rifle. You know, like there's 120 round per minute hand cannons out there that have a one second time to kill value. The reason why they're so good is because of its peak shot ability, that instantaneous damage damage. Whereas auto rifles, you got to square up. Squaring up is a difficult thing to do when you have a 0.93 second time to kill value. It's piss poor. On top of that, it's body shot TTK values at 1.47, which is, yes, the worst amongst all auto rifles. Needless to say, Shadow Price is not exactly in a position to be meta inside of PvP. I do believe at some point in the future, there will be another rotation where 450s will get a buff. Again, Bungie likes to cycle metas out in this annual way. Notice PVE, you've got rocket launchers, which are really, really good now, almost returning back to its year one form in D2 vanilla, which means right around the corner could be a 450 round per minute auto rifle buff, but we'll see. Regardless though, let's talk about some of the rolls that we landed on ours. First up is my explosive roll. By the way, this weapon does do arc damage. Yes, you can stack it with things like Bacchus, but this one came with extended mag, overflow, and dragonfly. This is actually really nasty. Dragonfly is really nice especially when you combine it with things like Dragonfly Spec. Overflow, in combination with the Extended Mag. I mean, we're talking big, big bumps there in mag size, which allows you to just lay on the trigger. Now, granted, Extended Mag does kill that reload speed, which is why, especially when you have things like Overflow, which is already bumping up your mag size so much, you may want to still lean more toward like Tac Mag, a Pendant Mag. But this combination was nice, and I got to see some explosions, which is also fun. However, this led us to our second roll, which is our more damage-dealing roll. This one came with tactical mag four times the charm which essentially returns us two rounds to the magazine for every four precision hits landed which i gotta say it's not as difficult as you think considering this is a 450 it's a little more manageable like i said precision frame so landing back-to-back -back crits proccing that perk not too hard or at least in comparison to other rapid fire archetypes and the final trait there is one for all. Hitting three separate targets increases damage for a moderate duration. Now that's actually a pretty nice bump there in damage. We're talking 35% increase in damage for 10 seconds. Now, I actually have not really played with one for all much until this weapon roll because a lot of weapons I've gotten one for all on have been like special weapons, right? Like a shotgun. And man, that's a hard one to get off because you have a small window there from hitting target to target for one for all to actually proc. Where a primary weapon comes in with this trait is the fact that you can just spray into a group of enemies and boom, it's proc. It's ready to go. I was really liking this roll. The damage was noticeable. It felt lethal. Noticeably so, even in comparison to Dragonfly. However, I gotta talk about that first trait column. When we take a look at the random rolls here, I have four perks I really want us to look at, especially when we pair it with damage dealing perks like One For All. Overflow, four times the charm, Feeding Frenzy, and Surplus. Now, pre-nerf Feeding Frenzy, I would have been like Feeding Frenzy all day long. However, we have a roll with Feeding Frenzy. I've played with it. Feeding Frenzy, it's all right. And I think it's great with perks like Kill Clip or even Rampage or Swash Bucket. But the reason why One For All conflicts with these perks that are reliant on Reload, Surplus, Feeding Frenzy is because One For All, the moment it activates, it begins. You have 10 seconds to go to Pound Town. And if you're sitting there chewing up a second and a half to two seconds 
just reloading, you just missed out on that damage buff. Which is why, even though I do like four times a charm, I think it is manageable on precision auto rifles. Hands down, the perk to choose alongside one for all and a magazine perk for PVE is overflow. Overflow all day long. We're talking about doubling that magazine size with the mag perk. Have one for all, proc it 10 seconds to just lay on the trigger. And again, when we start pairing it with certain exotics like Actium Warwick, you can see where this starts to get disgusting. Unfortunately, I don't have this role. I've gotten everything with one for all except overflow. But just playing with overflow, whether it was with my dragonfly role or even right there with my swashbuckler role, this role right here just showcases how good overflow actually is on this weapon. It reminds me a lot of like arc logic, but just like a different archetype. And the fact that you can roll with perks like one for all, which is really nice. Like I like swashbuckler. I like some of these other damage dealing perks. I like dragonfly. But if you got one for all and overflow, you pretty much proc that with in the first few shots, you got the rest of your magazine at 35% increase there in damage. Like the only way this could have possibly been better is if Shadow Price was a kinetic instead of an energy. Outside of that, I think Overflow one for all top tier. Now, another role I would like for you to lock down for the future, and it's always been a benefit to have, is of course, Disruption Break. There's no better trait to deal with barrier champions than a weapon with Disruption Break. Although it does have to match the season's artifact mod. This season, it's Scout Rifle or Sniper Rifle when it comes to to busting up barrier champions but next season it could very likely be auto rifles and i think disruption break alongside either surplus four times of charm overflow especially this would be a great role to just kind of have in your vault ready for when that artifact mod makes it into rotation and when we actually look across the landscape of auto rifles that have disruption break there was two other auto rifles that stood out to me there was ringing nail from black armory and uriel's gift both of which have unfortunately been sunset so shadow price is it man this is the only weapon amongst auto rifles that can roll with disruption break, which is why I think it's going to be extremely good when that artifact mod does make itself into rotation for barrier champions. Now, before I let you go, I do want to talk about the adept version. Roll wise, nothing has changed here. Shadow price is still shadow price. The perks on both of these are, are essentially the same. The only difference, of course, is going to be the artifact mods. Now that I mentioned how good one for all and overflow actually is together i do want to kick it up a notch i want to try it with things like a debt mag i'm curious to know if it will even go beyond its max max size because every weapon kind of has like a max like bungee will put a ceiling on our magazines however will a debt mag allow us to bypass that curious to know on top of that we do have other things like a debt big one spec which should be coming eventually in one of these grandmaster nightfalls where it allows us to deal extra damage against powerful combatants, bosses, and vehicles. So you can imagine applying this to Shadow Price, spray into a group of enemies, proccing one for all, having overflow for that double size of magazine, and then proceed to just blow your load into a thick boy. You see where I'm coming from? Now, I do foresee eventually a rotation to 450 round from an auto rifle. So I feel like Bungie has really singled out hand cannons to be good, but they like to cycle things out, and I feel like Shadow Price in a future sandbox is going to play a role in out of crucible and the adept version especially when we can include things like adept range or adept stability or adept counterbalance even though i don't really think it needs adept counterbalance considering this is a precision frame weapon which makes the weapon fairly vertical but i do think that shadow price may potentially be met i know i'm being kind of optimistic about it but the reason why i'm kind of bullish on it is because I, I play with it inside of pvp and i'm like wow this auto rifle actually feels good it feels good to shoot and it lands consistent shot it's just the math is working against it. That terrible time to kill value in its optimal TTK of 0.93 and that body shot TTK value at 1.47 is awful, which is why I think Bungie's going to go in there and nail down. This is an outlier. Bungie talked about nailing down outliers in certain weapons and abilities that are too powerful. They also meant weapons and abilities that are too weak. I think this is one of those outliers that Bungie's going to go in and readjust. And if that's the case for PvP, surplus all day long with probably Swashbuckler, you know, just, just some sort of damage dealing perk, whether Swash buckler or dragonfly i know somebody's gonna ask me what about unrelenting i want to like unrelenting but you gotta land two kills inside of pvp and what is it three kills inside of pve to actually proc it not that it doesn't have benefits it definitely does i actually wonder if it can bypass things like attrition inside of nightfalls 
However, inside of PvP, I wouldn't go with Unrelenting. I would just choose a damage dealing perk like Swashbuckler, Surplus, double dipping in that reload speed and stability, as well as that increase there in handling. This 450 should feel amazing for you. And as far as Bottomless Grief goes, yes, that's a new trait. We haven't really talked about it. And it's kind of up there with like Celerity, right? Where when you're the last living member on your fire team, each takedown refills your magazine. If this perk worked in solo play, well, hands down, this would be like S tier. Now, this is just one of those situational traits that that only procs when your team dies again similar to celerity you know honestly I, I just wish perks like these were intrinsic perks to the adept versions right like bottomless grief as an intrinsic perk on the adept shadow price would be disgusting and since it's so situational it requires your team to throw up to die it's the same with celerity i see people go flawless inside of trials they get to the lighthouse they open the chest and then they cry when they get a weapon with celerity that's not the way it's supposed to be so these traits that are so dependent on situations like bottomless grief celerity i just wish they were just intrinsic perks on the adept rolls overall though guys shadow price is a great feeling weapon it's a beautiful weapon it's a weapon that's only going to get better when you do get the adept version and i do foresee in a future nightfall we will be getting double grandmaster loot there for double the loot chances for these adept versions so adept pally adept swarm adept shadow price it should be quite nasty fellas and ladies thank you all for coming and watching and as always slap that like button like your mama told you right <laughs> <laughs>